Hello, welcome to Cute Design Studio and Introduction. So I'm Thomas Hartmann. I can briefly talk about myself. So I'm a senior R&D manager for the Cute company, and I lead the Berlin team that works on Cute Design Studio. I joined uh, actually Trolltech in 2006, worked on various topics. One of my first assignments was in the C part, worked with on Cute Creator, did consultancy. But um, in the last years, I've mostly worked on what's Qt Quick Designer and now Qt Design Studio. So, whoop, I skipped one slide, sorry. So first, I want to give you a brief overview. So um, I want to start with an introduction about Qt Design Studio. I want to explain a bit what Qt Design Studio is from a high level. And then I will give a demo and show, show, actually showing you how Qt Design Studio can be used in practice. And then, because that's, I think, really interesting for this audience, I also want to talk a bit what's behind the scenes of Qt Design Studio, especially how we use Qt, how, uh, what is the source code, uh, and so on and so on, and also what technologies we use. And in the end, there will be a bit of time for questions and answers. So, yes, what is Qt Design Studio? Yeah, it's um, Qt's dedicated design tool, and uh, it can be used to create UIs, but it can also be used to define the UX, the behavior of these, these UIs. Um, yes, you can work with 2D and 3D, and you can use QML for that. So QML is the underlying technology. So um, Qt Design Studio always works on QML files, and QML is basically the, the representation for the, for the UI. So there's no technology switch when you hand that over to an application developer, C++ developer. So everything is uh, always QML-based. Um, yeah, a bit under the hood is Qt Design Studio is based on Qt Creator. It's um, yeah, an adjusted and optimized version just for QML editing and for Qt Quick, Quick development. So we turn off the C++ parts, basically rebrand it a bit. I will talk about that later. And the last version we released is or was Q, uh, yeah, Qt Design Studio 2.1. And we release always a commercial licensed version and the free community version. I will be briefly talk about the differences. OK, so what can I actually do with Qt Design Studio? Um, yes, you can develop your UI designs with a wiki, with a wiki editor. That is what I will mostly show in the demo, and that is what a lot of people will spend their time with. But you can also create uh, animations based on the timeline. I will briefly show that also as part of the demo. You can define UI logic with states and binding. I will also cover that. You can create your custom controls. I will create a simple button in the demo later. You can import designs and assets, and we'll not cover that today. So for 2D, that's Photoshop, Sketch, and Figma. And that is basically the main feature that's just in the commercial version. And for 3D, you can also import for Maya, Blenders, and others for 3D assets. Yes. Um, and with this, you basically can turn your designs into working QML. You can create prototypes or fully functional applications even. What you cannot do is the, basically the C++ parts. And finally, you can deploy and run and profile on target hardware. I will not cover that today. But um, with Qt Design Studio, you can actually deploy to Linux hardware and, and even profile. OK, the latest version, latest version is Qt Design Studio 2.1. I already mentioned that. Yeah, we have the bridges to import designs. Then we have the visual 2D editor. We also have an integrated text editor. I will show that. There's a visual 3D editor for Qt Quick 3D. There's a flow editor. I will not cover that today. There's a tr state transition editor. I will briefly show that. Um, yeah, we support the Qt Quick layouts. I also will show that a bit in the demo. Um, yeah, all the ready-made and reusable UI components you're used to from Qt Quick come with Qt Design Studio and even a few more. There are timeline-based animations, um, a couple of um, customized visible effects, and there's also the live preview, which is also a very interesting feature I will briefly show. So um, you can basically live update your application while working on it. OK, yes. Um, the first release was actually Qt Design Studio 0.1 was in December 2018. And since then, we regularly released new versions. Um, Figma support was one of the, the items we added in the last two releases. We did lots of UX improvements, improved the usability in general, and for the upcoming release, we work on full Qt 6 support. 
and also um, again many improvements to the UX and especially the property editor. I will briefly talk about that later. Okay, and with that we come for, to the demo. So I will now share my screen. So what you can see here is uh, Cute Design Studio. This is a welcome page. This was the first thing that you will see. And on the welcome page, there are a few uh, demos that come with Cute Design Studio. I will show a few of them later. But for now, let's start with a new project from scratch. And uh, I choose the resolution here, but it's not too fancy. It's just a nice wizard that sets up a project for you. And then Qt Design Studio starts, and it has created one screen for you with a text in the, in the center. I delete that. We don't need that. Um, yeah, and there's lots of functionality you can do. For example, you can easily change the background color here. We have, like in every design tool, we have a navigator. For now, we just have one single root element here. Um, yeah, I briefly mentioned the text editor but I will show that later. So I just drag in a rectangle here, and then we can anchor it. So it supports the, the anchors that you have in Qt Quick. We can change the color. We can also change the radius. Yeah, and this is basically what, you, what we typically expect a technical artist or designer to do, to basically use the visual tool to create a some visual design. It could be imported from Figma or Photoshop, but you can also recreate it from scratch. And even imported designs, of course, you can tweak here. And now I, I just continue dragging in a, a label. You see all the text properties here, and I change the color, adjust the font size a bit. So no surprises here. That's just how you use it. I will briefly talk about the property editor later, how we implement, implemented that one. That's implemented in Qt Quick using Qt Quick Controls 2 and our own um, custom style. And I now created a layout around the two text items I created, and I just renamed them. So this is basically typical day-to-day -day work. And the goal here is that I create a very simple UI, show a couple of features. So the 90%, for example, I will skip that here, would typically be binding to something from the back end. Right now, we just keep it hard-coded. And yes, so without touching any QML code, I can, I can create this. And I use copy and paste in a few cases. And now I'm basically done with the basics here move that around a bit, you can see I have snapping here. So things snap to each other. There's also another nice feature. We have alignment features similar to, similar to what you see in Illustrator. So now I, aligned, uh, I distributed them actually, but that's not exactly what I want because I want two columns. So let's use the distribution feature again here. So I distribute them evenly. So I don't have to do that by hand or rely to just my eyes, and I can also have alignment features. That's pretty much what you know from Illustrator. That's really nice if you want to do absolute uh, designs. Of course, you have all the, the layouts and anchors, but sometimes maybe you just want to uh, uh, have one single resolutions, and then absolute layouts are easier. Okay, I put everything into a group with a custom item that only comes with Qt Design Studio. It's basically just an item that automatically takes the size of its children, so nothing special here. And I distribute here again. And I think, yeah, now I kind of would be done with, with this um, as a UI. And anchor it a bit here. So by centering it. And yeah. This was basically typical day-to-day -day work with what you do in, in Design Studio. Um, but now I want to do something a tiny bit more fancy. I want to create a 
custom button. So we create from the wizard a new component and choose button. And by default, it has two, two states for normal and down. And I can now edit them in the Visivic editor in the editor mode and adjust my button a bit. Yeah. So select the background, give it some radius here. So it's now a bit round. And it's also a nice place to show the live preview. So now I run the live preview of that button. And that's basically an interactive preview of the button. It's basically like running the button, but there's a tiny difference. That is, if I do now a change in the in the editor in Design Studio, it's immediately up propagated into the application. So you see that, that the, the running button basically is also updated. That's really nice in this case. So we now change also the label color. So I still have my working button and I don't have to constantly restart. It's useful if you have a component like a button or anything that's complicated. Also, if there are running animations, that's, that's super helpful because you can see constantly that it's running. Basically, just properties so we can go back. Oh, wait. First, I want to show you uh, transitions, actually. So this is a transition editor, and that adds automatically transitions to our states. And I can now change the duration a bit to make them more visible. And now, instead of uh, the button like it was before, it's animated. That's one trick. Because there's no animation, I have to make the normal state the default state. But now I see that there's an animation when I check the press the button. And it's a few clicks, as you can see. And you can easily tweak those, even using easing curves and so on. So, but now let's really go back. The form I created, and on top of those, this form, I will now use, uh, want to use now my custom button. And was added to the item library, even has a preview here. And I can drag it in. And I drag in two copies of my button, my custom button. Give it a name. And position them. Yeah, and this is really powerful. You can create your, your custom components in Design Studio, nest them. Actually, no, I lock the layer here. This is a feature I had recently added. So I cannot accidentally now change the layer anymore. And then I use anchors to the margin to position my buttons. And now they have the same distance to each side, is, uh, each side's 32 pixels in both cases. Yeah, locking is super useful, especially in this case, because I might otherwise accidentally move a label. And now I can show you the QML code. So this was the code that was generated. And yeah, you can even, if you use basically the mode, yeah, the, the text mode inside Design Studio, it's really hooked up with the property editor. So we can work in, in parallel. You can do a change here. Now I broke it. There's a syntax error that basically will block the UI until I fix it again. But see. Now it works again, and I can use the property editor in parallel. And I see the changes. And one thing is the doc widget framework. I will also talk a bit about that later because it's a special doc widget framework and it's very flexible and you can also like put it in, uh, next to each other and I would keep it like that for now. That's also very useful if you want to tweak the, the QML text a lot, if you want to do some optimizations, or maybe you are a developer and care about details, you can always see the text and the visual editor in parallel. Now I created two states and give them name. So also here, no surprises. Now I start to uh, make the buttons checkable and um, in one state, I make my whole UI invisible. So we have the operate state and the maintain state. And the maintain state, 
the, the labels I added are invisible. Okay. This is checked here. Then there's also exclusive, which is super useful. Because exclusive will basically automatically say that only one of these buttons can be checked at the time. Yeah, before I continue, I want to give the buttons proper names because I want to refer to them in when conditions. And then it's important that I have a good name. And here I can now refer to the check uh, boxes to the checkable buttons. And I can basically define the when conditions of each, each state without having to write code just by uh, using the combo boxes, which is very convenient for people who are not, let's say, not very professional developers who are not very used to writing code. So now we can also run the live preview again. And yes, you see that we have basically a very, very, very simple running application without writing any code. And of course, you can continue like that. But I also want to show you a few more advanced features. For, and uh, that way, that's why, I, for example, we'll now open the e-bike demo that comes with Cure Design Studio. And the e-bike demo heavily uses the timeline. And I want to show how the timeline is used here. So we have many states in the e-bike demo. And there are many transitions between those states. And we didn't use uh, transitions because they they, all, they don't always allow to fine tune the animations very well. In this case, we use the timeline and basically defined each transitions very explicit using keyframes. But that gives uh, the designer a lot of control. If the transitions don't have to be symmetric. You can add keyframes in the middle. And you can really make sure that, that the transition looks exactly like you want to at every, every pixel, basically, at every point of the animation. And for the timeline, we also have a curve editor. It's a very powerful curve editor. And here you see that there are also easing curves between the keyframes. That's something that, that's uh, more common in 3D tools. But that's a very powerful view on this. And to give you an idea, let's just run this. So yes. So basically, when I interact here, I switch the states. And the, the timeline is then used to animate between those states. These are exactly the same animation that you saw when I dragged the front timeline handle before. OK. Now I will show you the welcome page of Cute Design Studio. So the welcome page of Cute Design Studio is also developed in Cute Design Studio. Um, and that's a relatively interesting example because it has a C++ backend. And we mocked that up with QML. But first, I want to show this. This is basically the screen of the welcome page, the recent projects, examples, and so on. And yeah, it's done in, in, in Design Studio. Nothing too fancy here. Um, and we could now adjust it, change it, whatever we want to do. And uh, it, it actually was developed by our designer, and it's also maintained by our designer. You can also run it. And something shows up here in the recent projects because we have this mock backend. And that's a very powerful technique to basically mock up the C++ back, uh, backend with simple QML that can be understood even from the designer, maybe even tweaked by the designer. In this case, it's very, very simple. You look at the text there, it's just a list model, basically. And there are a few more of these. Um, but that's a very powerful technique, because now we have a project that runs fully in Design Studio, really can be owned, basically, by the designer and can be just integrated. And here is the trick. We have a couple of import paths that act at the, the mock data as, as QML plugins. And those mock plugins, of course, are not part uh, of the C++ part. And on the C++ side, it's just loaded by the Qt Creator plugin. It makes it possible to develop it in Design Studio in parallel to having it in the C++ application. Now I want to show you the digital cluster. That's a downloadable demo. I downloaded it before. So let's just open this. And that's a demo that shows a lot of the 3D capabilities. So Qt Quick 3D. And I'll start with the main screen here. 
Okay, you can see it. So that's a cluster, and that uses quite a lot of QQuick 3D. So to give you an, impre an impression, I just run it. So it has a light and dark theme. It was actually developed by a technical artist purely in Design Studio. It has no C++ backend. But you can do a lot of stuff uh, just using QML. So you can turn on the lights, open the doors, rotate it. You can see that you can even have 3D and 2D and then 2D and 3D again. Here's interior view. Here's a battery view with a nice animation. And there's the ADES view. And that was all developed in Qt Design Studio. And I want to show you a few of the files. So that's the ADES view. And the ADES view doesn't have a backend. And it's, it's really just basically mocked. And the, the timeline was used for that. But that's actually powerful technique while you are in the prototype stage, because you can always mock it. And you don't have to worry about the impl implementation at this state, but you can already define how it will look. And yeah, now we have another screen that has different states. You saw in the UI, and those states were all defined by the technical artist. And yeah, that's a battery animation you saw earlier. And you can create such a demo with either writing no code or just very limited amount of code yourself. I mean, of course, you can always go to the QML code. That's your choice, right? And yeah, for example, here's a component, right? One, one thing that makes QML so powerful is that you can have all these different reusable components. There's some, some structure that the technical artist was setting in place. And you can always look at the text editor. Yeah, with that, I want to stop with the demo and get back. So, OK. Yeah, now I want to talk a bit what, what's behind the scenes of Qt Design Studio. So hopefully, you now have an impression what it can do and what it's meant for. Um, but I also want to give you an impression how we developed it, how we use Qt, because we are basically, yeah, especially on the front end side, we use basically, we're a heavy user of the Qt and Qt Quick technologies. So Qt Design Studio is a pretty typical uh, Qt Quick and Qt uh, cross-platform desktop application. So it's a pure desktop application. We are currently in the process of porting it to Qt. We have a working version and, and just ironing out the bugs. Qt Design Studio is, that's no surprise, available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So, and I briefly want to talk about our main challenges, in a sense, uh, when it comes to the Qt stack, and that's with graphics driver on Windows. You sometimes have problems with those because, yes, we use Qt Quick and even Qt Quick 3D, and there can be issues because of graphics drivers, and those can be quite nasty because it's not on our control, and we might not even have a machine to reproduce those. Another thing that's a bit challenging is sometimes that Linux is a very heterogeneous environment. So that's why we officially only support Ubuntu uh, 2004, uh, the latest LTS version. I mean, we, we test it on more Linux uh, machines, but uh, we don't commit to, to more installations. It's just, um, yeah, especially the different window managers are sometimes a challenge, and, but also the drivers and so on. But, all in all, it works quite well on Linux. And actually, we have surprisingly many, many Linux uh, users, even in a commercial environment, especially people who like to or who develop in embedded Linux or for embedded Linux. They like to have uh, uh, all their tools on Linux and don't want to switch for, to Windows or Mac OS just for Design Studio. OK, so uh, what is Qt Design Studio? Technically, it's a customized version of Qt Creator. It's no fork. So um, it's usually always based on the latest version of Qt Creator. That's how we always did it until now. We don't plan to change that. Um, yeah, we brand it a bit, which means um, we, we rename the executable and, and uh, exchange the, the icons and so on. But that's basically a few switches on the build system. It's also upstream. You can even see how we do that. So there's really no black magic on that. The packaging is done a bit different. Because, for example, um, we switch, uh, we, we ship our own version 
group. So that makes our a lot easier because we basically know that Qt Design Studio is always based on the same version of Qt, the one we, we, sh we ship it with, which is currently Qt 15.3. And because that was one of the biggest problems with or is with the Qt Quick Design and Qt Creator, that we don't know which exact Qt version it's used with. And that creates a uh, basically com combinatorial explosion of potential issues. And it's basically impossible for us to provide a constant quality. And this becomes a lot easier in this case. We test our packages, and if they work, they work. And um, we can really provide a relatively high quality. Another thing that's special about Qt Design Studio is that it comes with a couple of custom components that come from a special repository. These are uh, QML components, actually quite a lot of them by now, for the flow editor and things like, like arcs that are based on the QML shapes and a uh, few MCU-specific uh, things. and quite a lot of uh, components in the end that basically just ship with Qt Quick Designer. Um, but those components, they are also open source and they are living in that repository. And eventually we also make a plan to make them part of Qt once, but we don't want to make that too early because we don't want to commit basically to the final API and the final um, implementation too early. Some parts are closed source. So, okay, that's a bit unfortunate, but um, that's how it is. So actually, um, there's a plugin that we add to Qt Creator that contains the closed source parts. So that's just a plugin that's just um, part of QDS. It's called Qt Quick Designer. And, and yeah, the biggest part of this uh, close, the biggest closed source parts are the Qt Bridges, the importer. There are also a few other things, but they are often just closed source because um, we didn't meet the feature fees for Qt Creator, for example, and then we move them over in the next release. This was the case for the timeline, for example, that we eventually moved over to Qt Creator, and uh, we just recently moved over the, the event list, which is another feature I didn't show here that is basically part of Qt Design Studio that was closed source, that, that, that we then eventually moved over to Qt Creator. Yeah, one thing that, that I really, really like is the Qt Advanced Docking System. I didn't show it in depth in the demo, but it's not a normal um, Qt Docking System, but it's a different implementation. It's based on, on the Qt Docking System, but it adds a lot of features. It was contributed to Qt and Qt Creator by Uwe Kindler, who's the original author. It's licensed under uh, LGPL v2. And yeah, you can get it from our marketplace and also from GitHub. That's basically the original that's developed by Uwe Kindler. Um, we also maintain currently a, a fork in part of, uh, that's part of Qt Creator. And yes, why do we use it? So because it has a couple of really, really uh, nice advantages and features. I think what was the most important feature was that it has no central widget. So it's more flexible. So it has no concept of a central widget. And you already saw that when I, when I split it, the, form editor and text editor view that this really is a very nice and powerful features in the context of Qt Design Studio because yeah, it makes the workspace a lot more flexible. Another feature I really like is the clear visualization of the uh, drop targets. You can see that here in the screenshot. Uh, it's very similar to what other tools like Visual Studio do. It's People understand it. It's relatively intuitive. There are more features, especially when it comes to stacking and talking. Um, also comes with perspectives, so you can switch layouts easily and so on. Perspectives can be built, out, of course, also on top of the Qt based one, but uh, you get it basically for free. Yeah, and that's what we use in Qt Design Studio, and I think it's really a great addition, a nice contribution, and feel free to to test it out if you need a powerful doc widget framework. Um, yes, so we are also a heavy user of Qt Quick for desktop applications. And that's why I also want to talk a bit about how we use Qt Quick, what is our experience, what we like, what we don't like, and so on. So in short, we use it for the welcome screen and splash screen. Those are relatively simple parts. The welcome screen are already covered. The implementation is kind of really simple. I think it's a really nice and great uh, test case and also use case for Qt Quick in general. It's nothing complicated. You can really hand it over to to a technical artist or designer, he can basically own the, the whole welcome page. 
with a little bit of help from a developer here and there. And that's really nice workflow. And they can build it in the way they want it. And we just integrate it into the C++ application. The property editor is a bit more complicated. I will talk about that in a few seconds. Um, and then we also have the item library, which is also a bit more complicated. So both of them are basically maintained by developers, not by design anymore, because yeah, they, they contain quite a lot of code, and they are mostly fully dynamic. And then there's also the states editor, who is similar. But even there, the, the, the designer can help, because we can give him stripped down projects that are pure QML. He can basically define the look, adjust it. You can also give access to him, and he can tweak around with the with the designs directly. And we did that, actually. So yeah, the welcome and splash screen, there's really nothing I didn't mention already, kind of. It's really pure QML. It has a very, very simple C++ backend that's very easily mocked. And it basically works as a standalone application in Qt Design Studio. And it also tests that test case for, for our workflow. Yes, the property editor is actually quite a beast. So it's really complicated. Uh, the property editor uses uh, customized Qt Quick Controls too, and yeah, we are quite happy with the with the result. So there are a couple of features that that you don't have typically for you. Do. For example, you don't have uh, with, with widgets and so on. So for example, you can drag on the spin boxes. Also, um, we don't show most of the controls by default. So most of the sub controls you only get when you hover on the on the controls that reduces a lot of uh, clutter, and it's actually quite typical for modern applications. And all of this would be possible, but very hard to implement uh, with widgets. And we did that. We didn't. We did. We decided not to do this. So we used uh, Qt Quick Controls 2 and Qt Quick. And we are really happy with the results. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that the studio controls are fully resizable. So um, every number basically comes from a small theme. And all the magic numbers are usually based on, on or use one scale factor. And if by tweaking that scale factor, they are fully resizable. We don't expose that to the end user at this point in time, but it makes our life a lot easier. Um, yeah, because basically all the numbers, all these magical numbers, they can be controlled by the designer. And therefore, he can really own this. Um, yeah, we also hooked this up to the to the theming um, theme of Qt Creator. So the colors actually come from the theming scheme or theme of Qt Creator. So that's why the it works in all themes, which is also nice. And yeah, the studio controls are part of Qt Creator, so they have the usual license, and you can look at them. I think it might be really interesting if you build something similar to have a look at them, and maybe even use them. OK. Yeah, let's briefly talk about the advantages of using Qt, Qt Quick in the front end. So it's really easy to customize the look and feel. I think it's really a lot easier than doing that with widgets. And I also have some experience on that side. And it's also a lot, easy, a lot easier to implement modern and advanced UX. Um, yeah, you can use Qt Design Studio for the front end. That's also, of course, nice, especially from our perspective. The designer can take full responsibility of simpler parts like the welcome page, or at least help out on more complicated parts with the property editor. On the property editor, there are always things that the developer has to help out. But he can always uh, help with the layouts, um, basically maintain the colors and magic numbers and so on. One thing that, that really helps a lot is hot reloading. So um, all our views uh, support hot reloading. So by pressing a hotkey, um, it will reload the QML code, and that allows very, very fast feedback cycles. And that's just great. And you get used to that very fast. So we press one button, and then you can test the different behavior or different size. Or one bug is simply fixed. No recompile, nothing. Another very powerful feature is that the property editor, for example, can be extended with external QML files that come or are shipped with QML modules. So yeah, it makes the property editor very extens ex extendable from the outside without having to write C++ plugins or anything like that. You can just basically write a QML file that extends the property editor for a specific file type. OK, what are the challenges? You know, the bindings between C++ and QML, they require a bit of overhead and boilerplate code. I don't think that's a show uh, show, uh, showstop or anything, but yeah, it's a bit of extra work. 
What is more serious is that the, the developers who do this work, they have to be experienced in both C++ and QML and QQuick. This can be a bit of a bottleneck. Um, and in some cases, QQuick is not as mature as QWidgets for desktop uh, development, especially if you think of tree views and so on. That's still not the case. I mean, we're really heavily working on that. But yeah, there are still things you might have to work around or experiment a bit. And yeah, there's also the dependency on the 3D acceleration, which sometimes can be a problem because of drivers. And generally, because of basically having two languages, there can be high complexity. And you have to be aware of that and be careful. So basically, all the logic we put purely in C++. So roughly, our rule could be something like no loops in QML. So if everything, anything is slightly more complicated, it becomes C++. And really, just the simple parts are QML and JavaScript. Another thing um, we added is Google Crashpad. Um, yeah, that collects stack traces. It's no technology bus. It's part of Chromium, but I think it's worth mentioning here. Um, it's opt-in because it can contain con uh, confidential data. We use Sentry as a backend service, and you can also look how it works in, in our source code and part of Qt Creator. might be worth looking into it uh, if you need a, if you want to collect crash pads, uh, crash dumps on desktop platforms. And another thing we added recently was telemetry that's based on k-user feedback. And it's also opt-in, of course, and we collect lots of data, usage behavior, usage pattern, but we also added a dialogue that explicitly asks users to rate features and so on. That's pretty typical for modern applications. And uh, k-user feedbacks make it really simple to implement. There's already a creator plugin that helps us with that, and we just sit on top of this. Yeah. If I want to try out Qt Design Studio, you have two options. You can download it using the Qt online installer, or the latest, or you can always get the releases uh, also from our download page. So that's a standalone installer for the, but the standalone installer always only works for the free, free, free community version. Where, while when you have, if you have a license and you have a commercial license, then you have to use the Qt online installer. But yeah, please give it a chance, try out. With that, I say thank you. I hope you learned a bit and got an overview about what Qt Design Studio is, what it can be used for, and also like how we use Qt and maybe something that, that you can use for your own Qt application in the future. Thank you, and have a nice evening. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. So um, I don't see any question right now. The, there is some feedback chit chat on, on the chat. There are people who are um, wondering how to uh, find some customers who can pay them to use this tool. So that's kind of <laughs> probably. Uh, but you can always try with a free version, so we don't need to. Right. The, oh, basically, it's, uh, you only have to absolutely have to pay if you have one to use the bridges, which are interesting. But then again, you already use the pro products anyway. Yeah, but I guess they just want to be able to spend time there. So being paid for that is a good excuse, <laughs> even with the, regardless of the version used. OK, I still don't see any question. So I guess um, we can go for a. Again, a virtual round of applause for Thomas. Thanks again. You have all the contacts there. So uh, 